Right, so you look at this expression, and you want to know what happens to the value of this expression when you plug in x values that get closer and closer to zero. That's what the limit means. So if we want to know what happens really, really close to zero, maybe we can just find out what happens at zero, right? Maybe that is the easiest thing to do. Um, so what happens if you try to put a zero in here for x? You get zero over zero. You don't get zero. Zero over zero, and that's undefined, right? You can't put a zero in a denominator. Okay, so if I just plug in, I get zero over zero, undefined. So I can't tell what happens right at zero, right when x equals zero. So I have to look at um, maybe a picture or a table of values to try to figure out what happens to the value of this expression when the x values get very close to zero. So here's some screenshots that I took from my TI. So in Y1, I just wrote the expression, right? This, this um, x over the square root of x plus 1 minus 1. Uh, I picked a good window. And then here's my graph. And this is the y-axis. So this is the line x equals 0, right? So I'm curious what happens to the y values of this expression as the x values get close to 0. Okay, so as I'm marching along my graph, x values getting close to 0, what's happening to the y values? Yeah, it looks like they're getting close to 2. Yeah. This y value right here is 2. Now, the function that I graphed isn't actually defined at 0, right? But it does look like that's what it's approaching as the x values get close to 0. And then I can do the same thing with um, a table of values. So I just have my function in Y1. I'm looking at a table of values where I can type in any x value I want, and it tells me the y value. So I'm typing in x values that are very close to 0. 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, negative 0.1, negative 0.01, negative 0 0.001, getting closer and closer to 0. I can't put in 0, right? See, I get this error because I have zero, it gives you 0 over 0. But as you put in num values closer and closer to 0 for x, what is happening to the y values that you're getting as outputs? They're getting closer and closer to 2. Yep. So I would say approaching 2. Yes? Yeah, so when you do this via a numerical approach where you use a table of values, like this could very well be approaching 1.9999997, right? We are just making a conjecture that it's approaching 2, right? Um, or maybe it's approaching 2.0000001, right? So we're making an educated guess by looking at the table and saying, and the graph and saying, I think it's approaching 2. But by doing algebra, we can prove what it is approaching definitively. So these things are really good to like just sort of wrap your brain around what's going on. And then we use algebra to show it's true definitively. So I would like to know what happens as x approaches 0 of x over square root of x plus 1 minus 1. So I cannot just plug in 0. Okay, so I'm going to do um, a fancy little algebra trick to rationalize the denominator. So I have x over radical x plus 1 minus 1. I'm going to multiply the top and bottom of this fraction by what's called the conjugate of the denominator. I'm going to do radical x plus 1 plus 1. So it's the exact same thing, but instead of a minus, I do a plus. And you'll see when we do this out why that's a genius move. Not that I came up with it. Right? <laughs> OK, so when I multiply out the, this denominator, so think of this as two, two parentheses. You just got to foil it out, right? So just multiply it using foil. So when you do the first, radical x plus 1 times radical x plus 1, what is that? x 
plus 1, right? When you do a radical 2 times radical 2, you get 2, right? A radical something times radical something, the radicals cancel, and you get the something. All right, so for my denominator, the firsts, I get x plus 1. Then look at the outer and the inner together. When you multiply the outer terms, you get 1 times radical x plus 1. And when you do the inner terms, you get negative 1, radical x plus 1. So the outer and the inner terms cancel. That's what makes the move genius, right? Because the outer and the inner terms cancel, so I'm not going to have any more radicals. And then when I do the last, I get minus 1. Okay, so the first, when you multiply the first, the radicals cancel. The outer and the inner, one's positive, one's negative, they drop out. And then the last, you have minus 1. And then when I do the numerator, I've got x times radical x plus 1 plus 1. So I just multiplied the tops as well. I didn't foil it out on that one. I just left it. Okay, so this plus 1, minus 1, those cancel. Don't need to write that. So I've got the limit as x approaches 0 of x times square root of x plus 1 plus 1 over x. I have an x on the top and an x on the bottom. Cancel. Now what happens? Once these x's have canceled, what happens if I try to put a 0 in for x into the remaining expression? You get 2. Zero. When you put in a 0 here, you get the square root of 1 is 1, plus 1 is 2. So our guess about what that limit was was correct. So, in general, first step, just try to plug in the value that you're interested in, right? We were interested in what happens near zero. So try to plug in zero. We couldn't. So we look at a graph and a table of values. You come up with a guess of what you think is happening near zero. Then try to do some algebra to verify it. So the algebra part is like the kind of trickiest part, but... Um, the idea is to try to manipulate it to get something to cancel so that then you can plug the zero in. Right? You want to be able to plug that zero in, so manipulate it till something cancels.